Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Home Coffee Brewing with April. My name is Patrick Rolf. Uh, if you follow this series, you've seen this background behind me before. And this is because we did a filter brewing video together with Tao and we also took the time to record an espresso video. And for those of you that don't know, the espresso format is a little bit different from the April Brewer concept. So what I'm doing is I'm bringing a mystery coffee. He doesn't know what we're gonna brew. It's 250 grams of April roasted coffee. And the idea here is to kind of guess the coffee together and also see how a home espresso brewer is dialing in a new coffee for the first time because I think that's one of the more challenging things. So come with me in here and we're gonna make sure to have a look. So um, we're back with a, a second video together yeah. actually, right? Because it turns out that you also brew espresso at home, right? Yeah. And this is kind of a new part of the series. We pitched it before. This will be the second video in it where I kind of bring a mystery coffee. You actually don't know which coffee this is. Yeah. I know what coffee this is. And the whole point of, of this kind of session is to see how people dial in new coffees. Because I think when you brew espresso at home, dialing in a new coffee Super is kind of difficult. Yeah. When you dial in a new coffee in a coffee shop or in a world championship, that's also very difficult. Like yeah. new coffees on new setups is difficult. So we're kind of here to see if we can help all of you um, do that in, in, in a kind of an interesting way, right? So the plan here is see if if maybe you can guess which which kind of coffee it is yeah roughly it's yeah. very difficult yeah. i'm going to try to help as well along the way uh and also then just see um if we can make a tasty espresso with with like a fairly small amount of coffee right so i'm gonna um give you this thank you and then let you kind of do your thing um maybe first like share a little bit on like what is the, the setup the setup that you're using yeah so I'm using like home use yeah. like peso machine. Then the I think niche niche duo, yeah, yeah. niche 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 yeah, yeah. grinder. Oh. And then for this one, I need like really precise scale, so I go for the Akaya. Because yeah. yeah, so not the Timor which you which you have before. Yeah. yeah, and I always use like two scale for dosing and yeah. just for and for the drip tray yeah, yeah. yeah. so the the brand of the espresso machine is a solis yeah. okay so a solis okay. we'll see if we can figure out like exact what the model is as well uh i don't really know but you told me you had done some modifications yeah so you what was the thing you did on the this machine i changed the shower screen yep to ims yep shower screen and i bought the new basket. IMS uh, basket. That was also IMS. Yeah. Yeah. 17 gram basket. 17 gram basket. Okay. So, and it's like 54 milliliter. I uh, no. Yeah. Yeah. 54. Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah, sure, sure. It's a 54 milliliter <laughs> basket. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, and then new shower screen. So shower screens, if you don't know, being a home espresso uh, brewer, also like a professional brewer, uh, shower screens are super important. Yeah because they really decide how the water goes on the puck, yeah. right? So some machines just don't have shower screens that allows you to extract uniformly and then it's not gonna taste so good. Uh, so it's really cool actually that you yeah. that you modified it, right? <laughs> okay, cool. So uh, we know a little bit about, I see some distribution tools and stuff. We're gonna, we're gonna get yeah. into that as well when we start making the espresso, I think. Uh, just like show us what you would normally do. Okay. Uh, and then I think we'll taste that. Sure. And then we see, you said you normally brew, because um, most of the espresso you brew or like milk beverages is for the rest of the family. Yeah. So you don't drink so much yourself. Yeah. Maybe. Oh. And then you said you normally brew a little bit darker roasted coffees. Yeah. Yeah. So what I brought now, it's a very light roasted coffee. Okay. Uh, and I think as a general rule, uh, just do your thing. But I'm just going to say that when you work with a finer um, roasted or lighter roasted coffee, yeah. you usually have to go a lot coarser okay. on the grind size because it's harder for the water to go through the coffee yeah. than a darker roasted coffee. Okay. Yeah. Try. That's like a recommendation, maybe. Yeah. But yeah. do your thing and then we'll see what happens. And I'll ask some questions. Um, on kind of what we're doing, right? Yeah. Okay. Maybe first, uh, what kind of water do you have in the machine? 
Uh, just the distilled water. Yeah. The, the other one, different from the one from the book. Okay. The, the so one that I brew with uh, filter coffee. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because if that one is maybe doesn't have that much scale on the machine. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It, it's just RO water. Yeah. So yeah. basically, a, the, a very clean yeah. water, more or less, uh, to make sure that there's nothing negatively impacting the the machine, right? Yeah. yeah. Cool. Let's uh, let's brew some espresso, no? Sure. <laughs> okay. And if you like, if you have some ideas about the coffee by like looking at it or questions, you're always welcome to okay. uh, to kind of ask them. Hmm. Smell different from what I brew with episode. Yeah, for yeah. sure. So this is this is a coffee that uh, a lot of people are actually not maybe using as espresso kind of regularly, especially not as a home um, home espresso brewer. I don't think we see a lot of this this style of coffee being used. Um, but we'll, we'll see if we can, we can guess. Gonna do, like, maybe I try to up dose the, to fill the basket from okay. 17 to 18. Okay. Yeah. Because I find sometimes I grind the lighter rose and it cannot fill like the whole basket. Sure. Like the darker rose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so we're basically one gram above the basket size here, right? Yeah. Um, which I think is quite, um, it's a very important ratio, I would say, always the dose uh, in relationship to the basket size that you're using when you're brewing. Cool, so you're doing then like 18.2 because a bit of yeah. retention in the grinder, of course. And I have to do a bit of, I think. RDT or WDT, RDT. I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a bit of uh, of uh, water water spraying on the coffee. Yeah. Uh, which I think is quite common for like single single dose. Yeah. What's the main reason for why you? Because the the fire like fire everywhere in yeah. the kitchen. So yeah. I just want to keep it clean. You, yeah, you keep yeah. it cleaner pretty much, which yeah. is true. <laughs> Go for it. Okay, for the dry side, for this one, I guess. I usually use like four in that. Okay. Road. So uh -huh. for from your advice, maybe I try. Like you could also try four and yeah. see what happens, right? Which yeah. could be quite interesting. Let's see. Let's then. see. Let's see what yeah. happens. Yeah. Okay. We can always brew more, right? So. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Have you have you tried other kind of home espresso grinders, or was this like the first home espresso grinder you got? Uh, I I have the Opus before. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That the the third one. Yeah. But I I find a little hard to like change the grind side over there because it's like click. Sure. Yeah. 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 And yeah. and then the internal adjustment as well. Yeah. It's a bit tricky. Yeah. So I decided to say to someone else. And, ah, okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cool. awesome. So let's see. Cool. So you have you I see like a few Normcore products here, right? So yeah. you have the little kind of funnel. Yeah. Uh, I guess because it makes it easier to to dose. Yeah. Uh, and, and then uh, the distribution and the tamper also, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, that's okay. Yeah. So basically, then grinding out and then also weighing what is grounded out before before brewing, brewing. which makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Cool. So where do we do next? So a little back in the BUDT. Yep. Yeah. And what's the main reason for using that? To avoid uh, like channeling like yep. as much as possible. Yep. Because it's gonna be channeling anyway. 
Right. Yeah, I think channeling. I think channeling is it's it's an interesting discussion whether channeling is if it's possible to brew without any form of channeling. I guess it depends on how you define channeling. Oh. Like clearly, the water is not going to go through hundred percent uniformly through the whole puck. Um, so if you're if the definition of channeling is an ununiform flow of water, then that's basically always going to happen, right? Obviously, you can uh, do things to to prevent it more or less, for sure. Uh, okay. and, I need to tap. Then you tap it down? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And then just use this one to just... Kind of a top distributor to just level out the, yeah. the top because, part? Because this, like, 54 water filter, when you just Tamp it with the temper, it yeah. will like pop out. Ah, it's gonna yeah. pop out. Okay, yeah. cool. That's interesting. Interesting though. So then you actually need the tool to kind of make it more. Oh, was that like a little click thing? Yeah, the four. No, I mean, yeah, ah, spring. Yeah. So this is like a spring thing. Which spring thing? They're really interesting, right? Because. Yeah. Uh, I always usually recommend these because it's easier to be consistent yeah. when you tap it. That's awesome. Okay, and let's see. Put some shower skin. Then they put a shower. Okay, and that is that also IMS or? It's from MH. MHW. Yeah. Okay. And what's the main reason for? Because even I change the shower skin, it still like go everywhere anyway. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Because I don't know why, but... So it's about making sure that it's like clean? Yeah. Uh, and that the water goes to more uniform. Yeah. Also, I think what's interesting with the screens is that it kind of um, protects the coffee. Yeah. In a way. From the... Oh. Yeah. Shower so it doesn't like, like overheat, which is cool. And then always like flush before. Always flush before, yeah. 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 If you can see, it's like... A little bit dirty in the breathing. Yeah. yeah, sure. But you, you always want to flush, right? That's that's uh, also like professional machines. So here you have like different. Is that is are all of these kind of manual or are they pre-programmed? Um, it's pre-programmed, but mm. I I changed the the second one for six, no double dot yeah. to run like no non-stop. Okay, so yeah. you have to turn it off yourself. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And what are you looking for now? So you have 18 gram dose mm -hmm. for like... What's the kind of volume? One, one to three. One to three? Yeah. Okay. That's progressive, I would say. I like that. Uh, and what's the what's the brew time? What the brew Maybe. time should be... I get in 25 seconds. 25? Yeah. Yes. Let's go for it. I'm very curious about this. 54, right. Okay. Yeah. One, two. Yeah, three. roughly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, that's true. You have to do a bit of math uh, yeah. also. Again. Okay. Okay. And then we do two singles. Turning it on. And this machine always like pre infill some. Yeah. Water. So I heard like the pump was starting. Yeah. Uh, does this look different from usual, or does it look very similar? It's very similar. Ah, okay, cool. But sometimes it's like... Yeah. <laughs> okay, but that's kind of perfect. Okay. You actually got almost... Almost exactly what you wanted. Yeah, let's see the result. Interesting. Yeah, okay, cool. So yeah. we actually almost brewed... Uh, about 57 grams out, to be fair. Uh, we did that in about 25 seconds. So very similar to what you're actually looking for, yeah. which is quite interesting. I would think it was a bigger difference given that the roast degree here is quite different. Okay. Mm. Do you have any, like when you, when you were looking at the beans, do you have any um, like ideas about processing method? Uh, I guess this one may be natural. It's actually, so it's actually a washed, um, um, wash process cup. And I'm going to show you how you can see it. Because whenever, uh, whenever you have a washed 
coffee, mm. uh, if it's like a traditional wash, there's always like a little, uh, let's say, secret to how you can identify um, identify what it is. So you see the, the kind of center here, yeah, which is what we call silver skin. Okay. So whenever you see like this amount of silver skin on a coffee, you can almost always be sure it's a washed coffee. Ah, huh. okay. So that if you look at the the, the duramina we also yeah. used uh, in the in the brewing video, yeah, uh, which is also washed, and you can see the same kind oh, of silver okay. skin. Yeah. So it's always right. a good uh, like visual indicator because a n traditional national natural process coffee wouldn't have so much of it. Ah. It would be a lot less. Yeah. Uh, it's a thing. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of new things to learn, right? Yeah. Cool. So let's let's taste. What, what do you maybe maybe um, share like what do you think is a good espresso in general like if you drink espresso do you drink espresso or no? yeah I, I do yeah. sometimes and what do you what are you like looking for also clean cup clean yeah. cup yeah and mm. um, sweetness mm. like balance acidity mm. yeah are you looking for like low body high body um, I prefer Low body. Lower body. Yeah. Oh, like bitter, not bitter. Mm, a bit bitter is fine, but not okay. bitter is like, I think better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sure. Mm. What is it? <laughs> Do you, do you like it, first of all? Like, is there something you think we can do, change and do like a bit better? Maybe grind coarser. Grind coarser? You want to brew like faster? Yeah. Oh. Because when I see like the pump, mm. the pressure get, it go up to like 12. Oh. But normally when I try to brew like light loss the coffee, yeah. It will go like say six to eight. Yeah. With the cause of guy side egg. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah. yeah. So we're gonna try we're gonna try one with a little bit of coarser grind size. Yeah. I think in general this is actually uh quite pleasant. Like I get some flavor notes in, yeah, yeah. in this that I think is very um representative yeah. of the coffee. Um which I think is 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 very interesting given that it's like literally the first shot you did. But it's still tasty though. Yeah. What would you would you say it's like uh, let's say chocolatey coffee, uh, like a floral coffee, like a very sweet coffee, or more let's say acidic coffee, or like would you would you be able to give it like a, a category almost? Okay. I know it's a difficult it's a difficult one to say, especially when you're when you're so new into to coffee brew. Not, not that floral, I guess. No. Okay. I think, well, quite hard. <laughs> yeah, it's quite hard. No, no, it is. I think for me, it, it is a bit, it is a bit floral. Um, I think it's a bit, I, I find a lot of like stone fruit, oh. I think. Yeah. So like a bit of melon. Ah, yeah. Almost a little of like, like peach-ish-ness. Okay. Um, and, and a little bit of like florality, right? I think I say we let's let's try another one, right? Yeah. Uh, and do the do the change you you kind of wanted. So basically, we wanted to go a little bit um, coarser. Cosmic. And what is it that you hope to achieve, taste wise, with going a bit coarser? I think a bit cleaner, a bit sweeter. A bit cleaner, a bit sweeter. Okay. Yeah. yeah sure. Also, try to fit it in like 50, 54. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because now we got we got a yeah, little bit yeah. more volume. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Cool. Let's do it. Oh. Oh yeah, it happens. Oh. So we're making sure the handle was as clean, which is it's always going to be very important. Yeah.
What was the main reason that kind of made you buy a, a, a Solis? Like, well, how did you find? I, first, I, I bought this Solis from the first kit at my home. Okay. Yeah, yeah. because I, at that time, I didn't have like any idea what to buy. And sure. The YouTube algorithm suggests this one. Okay. So yeah. I just, okay, let's try. And it's not that expensive. I think. What, what is the price, actually, if I can ask? The, the price in Thailand is like, um, one, 1,000, no, 18,000 baht should be. 18,000 baht, which is. Five hundred dollar, six hundred. Yeah, maybe. Someone six hundred, seven hundred. Yeah. Seven hundred. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Someone on YouTube can yeah. Google this. I'm sure. Uh, okay, so that's seven hundred dollars, which I, I guess makes it in the let's say lower price range of an espresso. I, you can definitely buy like lower, even lower price yeah. espresso machines, right? So it's for sure not the cheapest, but there's also a lot more expensive ones. Actually, I think it's cheaper not inside Thailand because uh, they're imported. Yeah, yeah, it's cheaper outside. Yeah, they double the price. Yeah. yeah. It's a big thing here in, in Thailand where the, the importing cost of a lot of things gets very high. Yeah. Okay, cool. So we're basically, we're trying another shot. We're going to go a bit coarser. How, when you say coarser, how much coarser do you want to go? I think for this one, the, the time is so close to 25. Yeah. So maybe just from four to five. Or okay. Four and a half, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's try five. <laughs> let's try five. So we, we talked about this being a washed processed coffee now, which I think was a good um, kind of initial idea. Um, do you have any idea on like where in the world the coffee might be from? Uh, actually, it's, I got some of him because I might be uh, Guatemala. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Why do you why do you think it's Guatemala? Because you said like you got some melon. Ah. Okay. And sure. The, Fair point. Yeah. yeah. The box that I got, it said mail. <laughs> the box, okay, you already have one of our copies here. That's yeah. true. I'm going to double check and see if. Ah, I mean, yes. Yeah. Yes. So, interestingly enough. And this is a pure coincidence, but you actually have one of our copies here already. Uh, and it is actually the same coffee, uh, which kind of oh, ruins it a little bit. This is what we're brewing. Yeah. 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 So that's why I said it's a, you have this little like floral character, yeah. right? And this kind of like stone fruity yeah. note to it. Yeah. When I brew it with filter, it's very floral. Yeah. I, Do you think it tastes very different? Hmm. Not that much, but I, uh, I cannot uh, uh. notice it. I mean. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So like what we're brewing is actually a uh, um, yeah. wash process geisha from. Uh, Diego de la Sarda, farmer at El Socorro in Guatemala, right outside of Guatemala City. A uh, Cup of Excellence winner in Guatemala uh, this year. That's why I said it's a, usually, I, I, we, I don't think we see so much geisha espresso at ah. home, maybe. I think in general, also in coffee shops, a lot of people tend to not brew geisha espresso, I think because it's, it gets expensive. Uh, but usually, you know, a good green coffee makes a good espresso. Yeah. That's my, my, my idea. Very tasty. <laughs> I think I think someone should compete with this. <laughs> That's what I tell uh, tell people I meet these I mean, it's, it's one of the best cases he he ever produced. I think out of the ones I've been trying, um, and I think it's super interesting. Uh, like espresso is so much tastier um, when you're using higher quality coffee to it. I think. So I will go with the same dose. Yep. Yeah. Eighteen grams again. Let's change the dry size. Yep. Yeah. Easy. Okay. And the water. Mm. 
Okay. Second one, it come on more. Mm, yeah. Maybe just spoon. take a little yeah. spoon. So we're basically at 18, 18.2. Yeah. Um, and you want to be at 18, so you're going to take it off pretty much. Which, to be fair, is quite specific for a homebrew, I would say. But um, also something that a lot of people do uh, competition wise. Um, if you guys have seen me compete in Bursta, you've actually seen that I'm not using a scale. Uh, so I'm actually allowing a little bit of deviance on on the amount of grams because mm. uh, 0 0.1, 0 0.2 difference, um, I'm going to argue, doesn't make enough difference um, taste-wise uh, for it to be a negative thing, I would say. And then the distribution. It smells very really good. It does smell really good, yes. actually, which is kind of cool. The tapping. Well, what happens when you don't tap? When you use the distribution tool, uh, it's just stuck around. The ah, way. okay, sure. And like this, this little setup here, is that also from... Um, um, different band. Different I think brand. Tight. Okay. I ban maybe just plastic one. Ah, uh -huh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's try. Oh, okay, let's try it again. Yeah. Okay. Make sure to flush again. <laughs> flush again, yes. And then we need the cups also. But it's kind of easy with the machine to do like a lot of espresso or is there ever, like if you do, I don't know how many espressos you do at the same time, but is, it, is there ever an issue to do like five, 10 espressos after each other? Super hot. Yeah? yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's like for my family, it, it will take like 20 minutes to finish like three cups. Ah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. When, when you steam it as well. Ah, sure, sure. Yeah. yeah. That's the the biggest thing with espresso machines, I think, from a price perspective, is often that the when it gets really high priced, what you're paying for is really the ability to steam and um and brew at the same time. That's kind of the biggest biggest challenge, I would say. Okay. Go for it. So So again, the other kind of pre pre infusion that is happening, and then we're going for it, and then about seven seconds, we're seeing the kind of first drop of um, of espresso. Okay. Okay. Nice. So now we're at, at fifty four, which is where we kind of want it to be. A um, little bit faster, or like similar time as well, uh, which is awesome. Okay. What's the like reason behind the the like cups we're drinking in now? Uh, or you're, you're also like pouring over because you could brew the espresso directly into these, but uh, you're brewing them into these and then you pour over. I don't want to stir it. No, nah, okay. <laughs> Which is, makes a lot of sense. I saw um, one of like my most inspirational moments in coffee competitions mm -hmm. is um, 
back in in Melbourne World Championship um, a long time ago. I saw uh, there's a barista in, uh, and and entrepreneur in Dublin called Colin Harmon. Mm. Uh, amazing guy. He has a company called Three Fee, yeah. which you guys should check out. And he was in the final, and I was sitting. It was one of the first competitions I saw, like barista wise. And he um, took this espresso and he served like the espresso, and then he had this like small little bowls. And he told the judges to take like one sip from the cup directly and then pour the espresso into the bowl yeah. and then drink from the bowl. Ah. And what happens is that it, it drops down the temperature and then it mixes it really well. Ah. So I also argue usually espresso is much tastier when you brew in and you, you do what you just did. So that's a recommendation I think at home as well. Yeah. So instead of doing a spoon, actually brew and then pour over. Mm. Yeah. Buy out. <laughs> so basically, um, 54 grams out, so a little bit less, which is what we were looking for before. A yeah. little bit coarser, so we got there in um, how many seconds? 25, 24? 20. Roughly? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it smells really great. Cleaner, I guess. Yeah. Cleaner? You like this more? Yeah. Mm. I think it's cleaner. Um, it's like better, better textured. Super peachy, I think. Maybe a bit more peachy. Yeah. What do you think about the like body, uh, the mouthfeel? I think it's a bit. Dry. Maybe. It's a bit dry, yeah. right? Yeah. I think I, w I would like us to try one more yeah. if you're if you're for it. Yeah. Um, and I would um, I would recommend that we go um, to the same grind size as before. Yeah. So like four. Four. Uh, but then you use uh, 17 grams oh. of coffee instead of 18. Yeah. And you do the same volume, 54, 56. Okay. Yeah. Should yeah. we try? Yeah. I find very often that, um, at least when, when, when I brew when I try to make the best espresso, uh, having the same dose as the basket size or a little bit lower uh, is often tasting really good. Um, so that's one of the things I, I often recommend espresso wise. So we go for 17. 17, uh, but and then just a little bit finer, right? Bit finer and 54 out. Yeah, we can also, you know, don't don't yeah, be no. afraid to give it a bit more also, right? Yeah. Um, I think people still has this idea that espresso has to be this uh, really Super short desired. beverage. Yeah. yeah, I never understood that really. But you, you, um, you said you're like, even from the beginning, you said you're using like a one to three ratio, kind of. Yeah. Where, where did you, where did that come from? Like, well, what was the inspiration for, because it's a kind of an untraditional ratio. So what is like your main inspiration for that recipe? I mean, I think I try your coffee at PD and then I, ah. I, I try to find the YouTube video that you talk about ah. espresso. <laughs> yeah. So and you tried the espresso also. At yeah, PD. I tried ah, both. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Oh, that's super cool. Yeah. Yeah. It, it changed like the test profile. How were you yeah. brewing before? I tried like 1 to 2 yeah. or 1 to 2.5. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think is the main difference between uh, one to two and one to three? The the body. Yeah. And I think it's like the aftertaste is pretty short in one to two. Yeah. Yeah. It's like it punch the, all the flavor into your face that, and you cannot like slowly perceive it. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. This one is like last long. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think so too. It's it's really the flavor quality is the biggest difference. 
obviously you're gonna have a lower lighter body but a lighter, lighter body can also be a very high quality right uh, i think that's something that is often uh, forgotten when when people brew espresso so should be 17 yeah yeah try to let's try It actually has a very low retention, that grinder, which is mm. interesting. I haven't used this grinder so much for for espresso and just a little bit for filter. Um, but it seems to be coming out pretty pretty okay, right? Yeah. Are you planning to to buy any new equipment or are you kind of happy with? Maybe in the next two years. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. yeah. Maybe new stuff coming do you have any like a machine espresso machine you really want to have that you that you don't have or uh maybe i want to try that decent yeah espresso machine sure yeah but maybe just be master with this one before yeah yeah so we're still in the learning phase yeah, yeah sure yeah. it also takes time right yeah Cool, so we're about basically espresso shot number three. Um, we're at 17 grams, the so same dose as the size of the basket. And we're gonna aim for a similar ratio there to kind of pull it out a little bit, around 54 grams out. Um, and then we'll see what the, what the time is. So we're flushing the machine, putting up the scale. And then we're going for it. Okay. The infusion, first drop around seven again. Awesome. Now, usually, I would always say when you when you put in the handle, you want to press on like directly. Um, okay. But I'm thinking because of the metal screen. That's kind of less important. Okay. Go for the six. About 26 seconds, 27 maybe, like a little bit longer contact time actually. But with still like a, a good amount of liquid out, so about 56, which is now almost a little bit above one, two, three actually. Also, when you um, like, for example, if I would do uh, practice for the world championship, like on on the actual competition, we have like one hour to to try as many espressos as possible, like kind of, and then you can't drink all of it because you get really over caffeinated. Yeah. Uh, so I really recommend like spending time smelling the espresso. Uh, it really gives a good indication of what you can expect, both from a body perspective and acidity perspective. I would say a sweetness perspective as well. Um, the aroma really tells you a lot about the coffee. Same with filter coffee as well. And I have to say they're all tasting like, they're all coming out pretty nice though. Yeah. For sure, in like slightly different ways. I think this is a bit sweeter, I would say. Yeah, agree. You think so? Yeah. yeah. Okay. What do you think about the like mouthfeel? Mouthfeel is a bit lighter. Mm. Yeah, but in the good way. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I get a lot of this. Like this tastes like a washed geisha espresso. Mm. I think, which is really nice. In the end of the day, that's kind of the most important thing that you can yeah. taste uh, the quality of the espresso. 
Yeah. Cool. It is pretty cool. <laughs> it's a really nice, uh, it's a really nice little setup, right? So to kind of sum up a, a little bit of what we've done here, so we uh, have been doing a wash process case share then from El Socorro in, in Guatemala. Um, using a, a Suliz machine, which I haven't seen. I'm sure some of you have seen it, maybe you're even using it. So make sure you comment kind of how, how you've been using it and what you recommend using it with. Um, the niche, or niche, 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 dual. Not sure what the pronunciation is here, but I'm sure one of you will tell me, you usually do. Um, but uh, we've been pulling some shots with that and obviously works really well, I think. It comes out tasting great, yeah. so you know why not use it? Uh, we use like uh, highly filtrated water to make sure the espresso machine is, is like clean, um, and then some uh, Normcore products, pretty much right for distribution yeah. uh, and um, um, special baskets and screen, screens as well, right? Yeah. So quite modified, yeah. yeah, which is really cool. I think this is one of the fun things with espresso home uh, brewers. You guys seem to be very like geeky. Yeah. You like modify a lot of stuff, right? Uh, cool. So I want to uh, thank you for, for having me here again for the espresso video as well. Um, super nice. Uh, it's really kind of interesting to see how you work with the espresso. And I always thank you guys for watching. Um, we're going to continue to do these espresso contents because I'm really interested in them as well. It's, it's really fun to see how, how you guys are brewing April espresso at home pretty much. Uh, if you have any kind of recommendations on the video concept, the format, what you want to see, what you don't want to see, um, what's easy and not easy, then, you know, please let us know. We're always really excited to develop and improve and become better. Um, and with that, as always, sign up for Patreon, see like previews of videos, uh, discuss more in depth and all of this, right? That's where it's happening. Make sure you subscribe, share all of this, comment. It really helps us. And these videos is all about building this community of people that just wants to improve their home coffee brewing skills, right? So thank you again for, for having us. So much. And uh, thank you guys for, for watching as well. We want to give a special thank you to all of our Patreon supporters. It's because of you that we are able to continue to make these videos. And we want you all to feel free to always come with suggestions and ideas on the content that you want to see uh, because we are doing this for you and because of you. Thank you from all of us here at April.